Hi, welcome back to Heels in Business. Today is the day. It's the day we are flying to the USA. Finally, after a year of waiting to get to this point. And I'm still a bit anxious. There's the possibility that the flight is canceled. There's another issue. So fingers crossed, all goes well today. In preparation for today, uh, you can see that I'm in a hotel. We stayed at the Sofitel at Terminal 5. It's one of the hotels um, that is, it's the hotel that is actually connected to Terminal 5. It's the closest you can be. Reason we done this was just to be, well, cautious. We didn't want to risk having to travel to Heathrow today. We thought, right, if we just get here the night before, we know we're here and we're safe um, in, in terms of all the traffic and other issues that could have happened today. The other reason was because we originally thought we would take a COVID test here at Heathrow the night before, but we ended up doing that on Monday. But it also gave us a buffer if anything went wrong with the test on Monday and we would have time to get one today. Um, but yeah, it's currently now quarter to 11 and we have pretty much sorted our suitcases here. So we're taking five large suitcases in total. And these are the things that we just need for the 45 days, up to two months possibly, whilst we wait for our sea shipment to come. We've also got two carry-on luggage and two backpacks. So two of these little ones and backpacks with us. In this one, I've got all my travel documents in here and in my backpack, passports, my form that I need for immigration, our certificates of our COVID test. We have it on our phone as well, but I thought I'd take a print out as well. Um, our location, car rental, everything is pretty much here with us. So hopefully we've got everything we need. And yeah, extremely excited and we're going to share the journey with you. Well, we have finally checked in and have our boarding passes. It took, I would say a good 40 minutes for us uh, to get checked in. So from the Sofitel, uh, it took us around five minutes, I would say, eight minutes to get from the sofa tail to the check-in desk. It was a little bit confusing initially because from my, obviously I'm used to coming to Heathrow in normal times and I would come straight down to zone H where the business class travellers or silver members can check in. But that whole, that whole section, and we'll share that with you in a moment, is completely closed at the moment. I believe it looks like there's a check-in for first class but if you're traveling to America, we had to check in at Zone G and that's where they are checking in passengers using the Verifly app. And the way that that works is essentially they just check that you've got the green tick mark against your face and name on the app where it's confirmed your negative COVID test and you've got your attestation on there as well. So that bit is quick, but then the rest of the process took a long time. The lady that was checking us in had been on furlough so she didn't really know exactly what to do which meant she had to ask other people then because we're traveling on my l1a visa they also needed somebody else to come and verify and authorize that we were allowed to travel so fortunately for me i i made sure i printed out the email from the embassy that confirmed that we're allowed to travel to the usa handed that over and then this other lady essentially checked the stamps the visa stamps the authorization and then asked me a couple of questions it looked like she was filling something in on the system about the type of company i work for and my position on there to authorize she then spoke to the other lady and then she then proceeded so the whole thing took about 40 minutes uh, they checked in all our bags an extra bag she didn't charge us for the extra bag which was really nice um, there is a slight complication it appears that our bags won't trans won't be transferred automatically to Vegas. It looks like when we get to Dallas, we have to follow a certain route, pick up our bags, and go through customs and then recheck it in. So that bit sounds a little bit confusing. We're hoping none of our bags go missing, but we'll see on the journey. through we've checked in gone through security and we are now in the BA lounge there's only one lounge open at Heathrow and that's the south lounge it's a little bit different in that 
everyone's socially distancing and there is no open buffet to pick up your food instead what you do is you scan a QR code that then takes you to a website where then you have the selection of food that you can then order they're things like chicken tikka steak and ale pies sandwiches cakes teas coffees drinks order and then submit and then actually I would say most of our food has come within five minutes so it's very very quick bottles of water and sparkling water um, you can get um, from the counters but everything else you order and it's very quick and I'll share with you what I've ordered I was expecting to stop when she was talking over you How was the whole checking in experience? Yeah, checking in security. I would say as expected. I and I was telling the lady when life was normal and they were running however many flights every day with the amount of passengers, I would get through checking in security on a good day. Ten minutes. It was that quick. That's even with checked luggage. Uh, so, forty minutes was a very long time. But I do understand they needed to check her authorization. There were other complications because of the connecting flight. And I understand now why, because if for any reason at immigration, they do not accept us, ob they obviously cannot check our bags all the way through. So it, it has to kind of stick with what we're doing. Um, but yeah, it was, it was long. And security? For me, it was fine. I went through, <laughs> but for my husband, not so much. He got the full security check. Um, he, the alarm went off and he got a good pat down. Security is fine other than the fact that we spent an extra 10 minutes waiting for the bags to come through security. I think that you can tell they're working with much less staff than normal. Uh, well obviously they're normal but even less so so certain skills so the issue at the security was that they needed a person that could view certain elements and we had to wait for him to come along before they could check that through um, but what was the issue wires i think yeah wires There's in all bag. The, both bags are full of camera equipment yeah so that created an issue with all the wires in my husband's back luggage with for the camera the hard drives the gimbal, everything that we're carrying. So actually the hold up was ourselves. We created our own hold up at security. <laughs> How does it feel? It doesn't feel real yet. Uh, quite a few people have been asking me, am I excited? How does it feel? I think because it's been a whole year of waiting to get to this point, it really doesn't feel I just feel like I'm going through the motions of yeah. each step and stage, um, but certainly do not feel like it's actually happening. Um, yeah, and even being at the hotel yesterday just felt like I was back at work. It, it felt more like a work trip. The hotel was very generic and very much like all the other hotels I used to stay in. It felt very at home. And even being here feels very at home like I used to do, so I, I, I really don't feel like I'm moving away. What are we doing now, sir? I am getting my national interest letter, so in order to travel to the USA, the US Embassy need to authorise your travel, and all you get is this email confirming that you are and the expiry date so hours expire expires on the 17th of march and this bda essentially at the check-in not checking at boarding or just double checking that you've got the authorization the bae staff has just checked double checked our passports and our authorization to travel and he did ask us a few questions about how it worked now um, just to recap we had a lamp test we didn't get the pcr test we got a lamp test and reason being because it's a lot quicker to get that back and the us except pcr lamp or antigen test um, we just asked him how many people are on the flight there is a whopping 16 people on this flight so this is probably or not probably this is the emptiest flight i've ever been on 
to the USA on a long haul flight. So this will be very interesting. Mm, it'll be interesting to see um, how many people are in business class. It might actually be empty. Yeah, I mean, when, when we looked at the seat map, it looked like there were three other people, I think, in business from what we could tell but yeah and it will certainly be the emptiest business class that I've been in unless lots of people have decided to upgrade who knows oh, we have finally made it onto the plane there we are. great thank you no um, this is quite a momentous occasion considering how long it's taken and I really I, I, I kept saying to people, I won't believe it until I'm actually on the plane. And we are on the plane to the USA now. Hopefully it takes off. And I guess the last thing is them accepting us at immigration, of course. Um, but yeah, it was pretty quick once we got to boarding. There's only 16 people to board. And the, as you can see, most of business is empty. They have provided a water. The famous, I've missed these, I was collecting these monthly with my travels. I'm assuming it's the same as what they were doing before. Let's have a look. Yeah, so we have socks, sleep mask. Earplug, toothbrush, toothpaste, and then the spa. I have missed these treats of life. <laughs> Should be taking off in about five minutes or so, and it's very similar to normal boarding on a British Airways flight. They come around, they give you your menu, and they let you know what to expect. In terms of the flight and what's different, obviously we have to wear the mask for the duration of the flight, except for when we are eating. Um, so that's the only thing that they've pointed out. We have our menu. Um, I would say it's the typical selection of cocktails, gins, champagne. If I turn it around, you can see the champagne selection, wines. Um, the lady just came around and asked us what we would what would we like. We've gone for a couple of glasses of the Brut Champagne. <laughs> it's, all, it's all very strange after not doing this for so long. Um, and obviously the menu. She's also mentioned that we can get the first class treatment in that we c as there's so very little people on the plane, we can say when we want our food. So we've asked for, for it in a few hours. Dallas now I think in the next 20-30 minutes we should be landing 
Uh, I think the flight's a little bit delayed because of the original delay from Heathrow. Um, it was a comfortable flight, it was just like how I remember it. Um, the service was really good but they, you would expect so because of the amount of passengers on the plane. The food was great. Um, yeah. Glad to be finally landing in Dallas and onwards we go to Vegas. Well, we have finally made it to Las Vegas, woohoo! Um, as you can tell, I'm probably, well, should look a bit more fresh than you would expect for somebody that's been traveling over 20 hours. Uh, this is, we're actually filming this the next day in Vegas and it was, it was fine. It was a very long day though. In the end, I think I mentioned that I thought the original flight from London to Dallas was delayed. It was initially, but then they uh, made up the time. So we actually landed in Dallas early. Getting through immigration was super easy. There was literally no one there really when we was going through immigration. It took, we queued for about five minutes maximum and then even with the immigration officer I would say it took a maximum of five to ten minutes of him just checking the paperwork. He was super friendly. The only question he asked me was what company do I work for and I'm not even sure he even asked me what what I done as a profession he just asked me which company and that was it he said welcome welcome back and then we was on our merry way at Dallas we had a two over two hour stopover it was a bit complicated um, so as we left immigration we had to collect our bags they were already out there was only 17 people on our flight um, when we got there, picked up our bags, went through customs, they done a very quick check, went through there, then you kind of start to loop back into the airport where they have an area called recheck bags. It is a bit confusing, but then there were two guys there saying that we're going to recheck your bags in and they literally just took them, well, we put them back on the conveyor belt and they went back. We then had to then check in for the American Airlines flight. Because of how the what had happened at British Airways, where they only check you in for one leg of this segment. We then had to go to the American Airlines check-in desk or even one of those ticket counters, as we found out, where just we put in our confirmation code and then checked ourselves in. The only downside was that we lost our seats. So we had two seats next to each other, so we had to sit separately, unfortunately. Um, that flight was three hours from Dallas to Vegas. It was fine, we were fed, watered, had drinks. The attendants were highly amusing and very, um, really friendly actually. Um, everyone actually um, on that plane was super friendly when we was talking to them. It was really busy, it, it really surprised me. I had this impression that travel ha was not, well, I didn't expect so many people to be traveling and I would say pretty much every seat on that plane, it looked like to me, was gone. It was a packed out plane. Um, everyone had their masks on and I would say there was no issues. Got to Vegas again because so because we'd already gone through immigration at Dallas when we got to Vegas we didn't have to do any immigration checks. We landed and pretty much walked straight to the baggage claim and then from there we got our car rental and we were pretty knackered by that point. I would say about then was when it became a blur for me and I was just going through the motions of okay get the bags, get the car rental and get to this apartment. So we are staying at an apartment called the Elysian at Flamingo um, I believe and to be honest we, we, we had a quick walk around when we got in last night but we was, I would say we were pretty delirious at that time and very tired so we will look at this properly today. We've now had a good night's, well, goodish night's sleep, and we will take it all in. We'll do a tour of this apartment for you so you can see where we're staying. But really pleased that we finally, finally made it to Vegas. Thank you for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe, comment below, tell me what you're finding interesting. What would you like to learn about our move to Vegas?